السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. نحمده ونصلي على رسول النبي الكريم. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين. الرحمن الرحيم. مالك يوم الدين. إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين. إحنا السراط المستقيم. سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب. ذوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبي إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما ألا ما سلوا وسلم بارك على سيدنا ولا محمد طب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبسار وديائها وعلى آله وصحبه دائما أبدا سلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله um, Last week we were talking about توبة أو repentance in relation to شب البرات أو ليلة البراء and the intention was to start talking about Ramadan today, but you know, I, I think I left a few things um, un, or you know, things loose and didn't complete things. Uh, so I'm going to continue with Tawbah uh, or forgiveness, which also repentance and forgiveness. Which you know, when we talk, start talking about Ramadan, it will continue into that because Ramadan is also the month of forgiveness. You know, the first 10 days are the days of uh, Rahma or mercy. The second 10 days are the days of Mawkhirat, forgiveness. And the last 10 days are Ithum Min al Nar, emancipation from the fire. So, uh, so all of this is connected. You know, and everything's connected one way or the other. Uh, it's just, you know, looking at things from perspective where you can connect the, dot, the dots. Last week when we were talking, you know, I alluded to the forgiveness of Adam and Eve, you know, and I didn't really go into that, and so I want to go into that in connection to how we were talking about things last week. Uh, when we look at the story of Adam and Eve, you know, Allah Subhanahu wa says to the angels that I'm going to create a vice chair on earth. You know, in Surah Baqarah, with Qala Rabbuka lil malaikati inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. Addressing Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, "And remember when your Lord said to the angels that I will create a vice chair on earth. You know, but He creates Adam Al Islam and He places him in paradise. You know, with the people of the book refer to as Garden of Eden and thinking that Garden of Eden was on the earth. Garden of Eden is paradise, not here." And then Adam and Islam, after being there for a long time, long enough for someone who's never known company to miss company, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates from him his wife, his mate, Bibi Hawa or Eve. And when he creates her, that creation triggers the creation of the tree. Because then he places them both in paradise and he says, You can do whatever you want, but don't approach this tree the shajara and what that tree is I'm not going to go into the details of that right now you know but just understand that that tree did not exist until Bibi Hawa existed and then if you read the verses it makes it very clear as to what the tree is even though some people talk about this and that but like again I'm not going to get into the details so he tells them you do anything you want to here just don't go don't don't eat from this tree. And Satan comes and he convinces them to eat from the tree. But it's interesting how he convinces them. You know, he swears to them in the name of Allah that if you eat from this tree, then you will become like the angels or immortal. Meaning you'll be able to worship Allah forever. And the both of them honoring the name of Allah 
and saying, how can anybody lie in the name of Allah? You know, so, so to honor the name of Allah and to have that on opportunity to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forever, what do they do? They eat from the tree. You know, part of this is mentioned in Surah Baqarah and another part of this is mentioned in Surah Araf. So Surah number two and Surah number seven. You know, it's interesting, you know, when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders the angels, when he created Adam alayhi salam, and he blew within him his soul. That when I blow, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angels, when I blow my soul into him, then you fall into prostration. Not before. And then what happens? All of them prostrate except Iblis. Iblis before he was Iblis was Azazil. And then when he worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bowed down to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and prostrated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much so that not a not a inch was left on the earth. You know, not a not a no space was left on the earth where he had not bowed down to Allah or prostrated to Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promotes him from Azazil to Iblis, meaning Libas. Iblis is from Libas, meaning dress. So he dons him with the dress of the angels and gives him permission to roam through around with the angels. And eventually he becomes the teacher of the angels. All of this because of all of this worship that he's done. He has made sujood or prostrated to Allah everywhere. But when the order comes now, bow down or prostrate to Adam, and reality to that nur that Allah Subhanahu has placed within Adam, now what does he do? He says, no. He refuses. Out of what? Out of arrogance. Because when Allah Subhanahu Wa asked him, why, what kept you? What prevented you from, from prostrating? He says, I am better than him. And he gives his reasoning for being better. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, get out. And not only get out, but now you are accursed. You know, like we say before, we recite the Quran, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan, Nir Rajim. So he says, get out. You know, the important point, one of the, well, one of the important points to, to note here is, Iblis had no, so Iblis becomes Shaitan when he refuses to prostrate. Iblis had no hesitation in prostrating to Allah. No one even had to tell him. He simply knew that Allah was to be worshipped and he prostrated everywhere to Allah. Yet now when the order came to humble himself before Adam, and again the reality is before that nur that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed within Adam, now he's arrogant, no. Now the arrogance comes out. You know, and if we, if we draw a correlation to what we were talking about last week, this is like the hypocrites, like Abdullah ibn Ubay, when it was says, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ تَعَالَوْ يَسْتَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ لَوَّوْ رَوُوسَهُمْ وَرَأَيْتَهُمْ يَسُدُّونَ وَهُمْ مُسْتَكْبِرُونَ and when it is said to them, come, that the messenger may ask forgiveness for you. You see them turn their heads and turn, turn away in arrogance. Same as shaitan. Because they are the students of shaitan. You know, again, this gets back to what our attitude is. You know, my attitude should be that of the believers, not that of shaitan. So now, when Adam alayhi salam eats from the tree, and not just Adam, but when his wife, Adam and his wife, Hawa, alayhi salam, when they eat from the tree, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks them, or says to them, you know, and this is verse number 22 in Surah Araf, you know, where he says, 
in the end of that in that verse, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that uh, and and when they when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala called them, called the two of them. It's very it's very interesting. This the 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 wording is very specific. You know, as we know in Arabic, you have singular, you have dual, and then you have plural. So plural is three or more. You know, the wording for dual is different. The wording here throughout this part of the verse is all dual, speaking to two. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing two. Rabbahuma. It's huma and kuma. The, all of the words, meaning two of them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked them, he says, did I tell the two of you? Not to approach this, this tree. And that Satan is an avowed enemy to the two of you. The response in verse number 23 is, Qala, not Qala, Qala would be he said. Qala is the two of them said. Rabbana dhalamna anfusana, wa illam tawfil lana wa tarhamna, lanakunanna mil khasirin. O oh, our Lord. And Rabbana is not the two of our Lords, but our Lord, plural. So they're including our, their progeny within this, even though there is no progeny at that time. They included all of us. Rabbana dhalamna anfusna. O our Lord. We have truly wronged ourselves. By going against you, we haven't done anything to you. We have wronged ourselves. Hmm? And if you are not, if you do not forgive us, وَتَرْحَمْنَا you know, and merciful to us, then we will truly be destroyed or the lost. Hmm? See in Surah Baqarah, when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions the eating from the tree and them slipping. He says, فَتَلَقَّ آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَابِ الرَّحِيمِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded them. فَتَلَقَّ آدَمُ Reminded Adam al Islam. مِنْ رَبِّهِ from his Lord. So his Lord reminded him some words through which he turned to him in mercy. So most people say that these words are Rabbana dhalamna anfusana, which part of that is accurate. You know, because if you look, if you, again, you look at the whole situation, you know, when, when Adam al-Islam says this, unlike Iblis who became arrogant, Iblis is kicked out and cursed. The response to Adam al-Islam saying this, in verse number 24 is, قَالَ أَحْبَتُوا Get out. Get down. Get out and, 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 and you know, the earth will be a dwelling place and a place of your livelihood for a certain time. Get out. You know, if I go to somebody and ask for forgiveness, you know, I've done something wrong to them and say, please forgive me. And they say, get out. Have they forgiven me? Tawbah, or repentance, washes away everything before it. You know, if somebody, you know, for someone who's non-Muslim, his repentance is to enter Islam. If he enters Islam by accepting Allah as his Lord, and Muhammad Wasallam as the final messenger, everything before that is wiped away, is clean. Doesn't matter what he did before that. The same way for, for, for a believer who, who commits a sin and now he goes back to his Lord. When his Lord accepts his repentance, it's like it never happened. It's all wiped away. So, Rabbana Dhalamna is said immediately in paradise when Adam al Islam, when Allah SWT asked Adam al Islam, Did I not tell you to go to this, go near this tree? Both of them, the two of them, said what? these words in paradise. 
and yet the responses get out. Which is also, you know, this is fulfilling the will of Allah. Because Allah SWT has said to the angels, I'm going to create a vice chair on earth, and then when he creates Adam and Islam, he places him in paradise. That's our original home. Home is where the heart is. Everyone has that natural inclination that that's where they want to go. The world makes us forget. So now, they're sent to the earth. Adam and Islam in one place. Maybe Hawa in another place. And they eventually meet. And where do they meet? You know, after 300 years of repeating this over and over, and not getting a response from his Lord. You know, Adam and Islam constantly crying and asking his Lord for forgiveness. But there's no response for 300 years. Until now, he and his wife... They meet where? Arafat. You know, Arafat outside of Mecca, which is the main part of the Hajj. This is the Hajj. The Rasulullah said that if someone coming for the Hajj, you know, he misses everything else and he gets he gets to Arafat on the ninth of Zil Hajj in enough time that he can throw a stone into Arafat. His Hajj is complete. What does Arafat mean? Arafat means to recognize. Many people say that, well, you know, because Adam and Hawa, they recognize each other, so that's why it's named Arafat. If you're the only two humans on the earth, and you see each other, you're going to recognize each other. I mean, that's just the way it is. There's nobody else. So wh why is that significant that the whole place it becomes named Arafat? Because they recognize something else. The rec true recognition was what they needed to do in order for their, ex for their repentance to be accepted. Because they've been saying, making this dua to Allah directly, Rabbana adalamna anfusana, for 300 years and no response. So now they recognize, you know, Arafat is the heart of the Hajj. And the heart of Arafat is Jabal Rahmah, the mountain of mercy. Because this is where in Arafat they recognized what they needed to do and what did they recognize. The narration is in Mustadrak, in Imam Hakim's Mustadrak, and he says it's say, and I'm going to come back to this point. Bayhaqi narrates it and says it's say, and all of these scholars of Hadith. Subki says it's say, Suyuti says it's say, Ibn Jawzi says that it's say, that it's correct. And the narration is what? That in Jabal al-Rahma, Adam al-Salam, when he makes this dua of Rabbana Dalamna, now he recognizes what he has forgotten. And he says, Oh Allah, you know, because of your love for Muhammad, <laughs> forgive me. And now Allah SWT turns to him with forgiveness. You know, the mercy of Allah was that he did not destroy Adam alayhi salam for disobeying him like, he like, like shaitan is outcast and cursed. Mm -hmm. But now he turns to him with forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And then he asks him, he says, how do you know this name? Of course, Allah knows how he knows the name. Mm -hmm. Allah knows everything, but he wants us to know. And then Adam al salam he says that when you blew my soul in, or your soul into me, and I saw on, written on your throne, La ilaha illallah, that there is no one worthy of worship but Allah, Muhammad Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu is the messenger of Allah. He says, I knew then that this name is the one that you love. Otherwise, you would not place it beside your own name. 
And so out of your love for Him, forgive me. And so now, the forgiveness comes. Again, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهُمْ الرَّسُولُ لَوَجَدُ اللَّهَ تَوَّعَبَرُ رَحِيمًا That if, when they had wronged their own souls, they had come to you, O oh my beloved, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and asked for Allah's forgiveness, and you had asked for their forgiveness, or not you, but, and the messenger, because as I said last week, this, um, this verse is valid until he is the messenger. And he is always the messenger. And the messenger had asked for their forgiveness, then they would find Allah forgiving and merciful. You know, there are people these days who say, ah, oh, this hadith is daif, it's weak. You know, which is also very interesting because Imam Hakim, who wrote Mustadrak, which is a famous book of hadith, and, and the criteria for Mustadrak, the criteria he used is the same criteria used by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim in their say. And he acknowledges that one of the narrators, Abdul Rahman ibn uh, Ziyad ibn Aslam is weak. And he says that this, how he says, however, this is the only hadith of this narrator that I have accepted because this hadith is safe. There's no doubt in it. Which tells us that this, this narration was overwhelmingly accepted at that time, which is 400 years after Rasulullah Sassam. So until that point, no one disputed it. Everyone accepted it. It wasn't until, until Ibn Taymiyyah, which is another 200 years later, which is roughly 650 years after Rasulullah Sassam, that anyone disputes it. And yet Imam Subki, who debated Ibn Taymiyyah on various other points and dis defeated him in the debate, says that the, that the narration is correct. There's no doubt in it. So when we look at this, you know, again, how it applies to us, you know, we look at Shaitan and his attitude, and then we look at people around us, and they say, oh, you know, the messenger can't do anything for you. you know, we don't need to go to the messenger. Then we know whose attitude they have. The same way when those of us, when we make du'a and we recite durood and we cite and we and we and we invoke Allah's mercy through the wasila of Rasulullah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, whose attitude is that? It is the attitude of Adam alayhi salam, teaching his progeny how to repent to Allah. Because you know it, it's very interesting when when. Uh, one of the students, and I'm going to talk about this when I start talking about the Hajj later, inshallah. One of the students of Abu Bakr Shibli, rahmatullah, you know, he goes for the Hajj. And then when he comes back, he meets his sheikh, and, and Abu Bakr Shibli, rahmatullah, asks him, he says, and he says, he comes to his teacher, and he says, oh, I, 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 I'm coming back from the Hajj. So he starts asking him multiple questions, you know, when you put the Arham on, did you do this, all of these things. But he asked for Arafat, he asked a specific thing. He says, when, did you go to Arafat? He says, yes, of course. Arafat is the Hajj. He says, yes. He says, when you, when you were in Arafat, did you realize where you came from and where you are going? You know, and why you were sent here and the purpose of being here? He says, did that, did that realization come over you? And he said, no. He said, then you did not go to Arafat. You did not enter Arafat. And in the end, he eventually, and again, well, I'll go over this later. He said, in the end, he eventually tells me, he says, you need to go back and make your Hajj again. So when you enter Arafat, you know, because somebody say, oh, see, uh, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and then here it says, Rabbana dalamna anfusana. So the reminding is, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him these words to, to use that, oh Allah, uh, we have wronged ourselves and if you are not forgi uh, forgiving and merciful, we will be destroyed. 
But again, the point here in the Quran is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, now get out after that, immediately after they say this. <coughs> so if somebody says, well, you can't show me in the Quran where they use the wasila of Rasulullah, so some, even though indirectly you see that throughout the Quran, but then the question for them is, okay, well, you know, if, if, if you don't accept this, then why is Arafat named Arafat? And even if that, okay, if you say, well, they recognize each other, then why is Jabal Rahma named Jabal Rahma? So if Jabal Rahma is named Jabal Rahma because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turned to Adam al Islam with mercy and forgiveness, then what did he do different there that he didn't already do in paradise? Because again, Rabbana Dalamna was said in paradise. There must have been something that changed that made this so significant that Jabal Rahma becomes the heart of the heart of the Hajj. And so when his student said no, he said, you know, go back and make it again. But if we start analyzing this, you know, where did we come from? From paradise. Where do we want to go? Back to paradise. What is the purpose of us coming here? It is to invoke our, the mercy and the forgiveness of our Lord. But how do we do that? By making ourselves closer to the messenger. Sallallahu Loving him and honoring him. And understanding that he is our wasila. Our means. And and invoking the mercy of Allah through that wasila, through the love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for his Habib. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is the whole purpose of being here. And again, anyone who, who, who understands the Hajj, it becomes very clear for him. Because this is the heart of the Hajj. And again, you know, as I said early on, this is also in reality the heart of, of Ramadan, which is coming. And so next week I'm going to start talking about that aspect. And, and so before then, you know, I encourage everybody to read verses 183 through 188 of Surah Baqarah, Surah number 2. And these six verses are you know, really the only verses in the Quran that deal with Ramadan. So 183 through, through 180. Uh, eight, inshallah. So just remember to read those, and it's very interesting because all six verses were not revealed at once, and that's an important point to understand. And then you, un that once you understand that point as to what the difference is and why they were revealed differently, then everything becomes clear, inshallah. So we'll go over that next week, inshallah. Uh, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala help us and, and guide us and. Fill our hearts with his true love and the love of his beloved Prophet Muhammad oh, وسلم, his family, his companions, and all of those whom they love, inshallah. Okay. Brother will give the adhan and then we make some men, inshallah.